What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here. Little math heavy today. Uh, we are going to talk about is it better to get it back fast or sell it for the most? What I wanted to do today was kind of lay out two different paths. Neither one is necessarily right or wrong. It's just a different way of thinking about things when it comes to grading and selling sports cards. I think a lot of people don't always take into account turnaround time and how even though you're not selling it for the most amount of money possible, doesn't matter if you're churning and burning and you can actually come out way further ahead than selling for the most at a slower turnaround time. We're gonna use PSA and SGC as the primary examples today. You could use, you could substitute in really whatever grading companies that you want and kind of run through this scenario uh, on your own if you want to. You just sit down and whenever we talk about grading, we always talk about work out the numbers and, and, and figure out where, where a card should go and, and how you want to approach things. Now, a couple things here. We're going to, I don't want to say we're going to play fast and loose with the numbers, um, but we're not going to factor in, you know, shipping to and from the grading company. We're not going to factor in because you're going to pay that no matter who you send with. Um, we're not going to factor in selling fees because everyone's going to sell on different platforms and you may sell different cards on different platforms. Maybe you're selling at shows, maybe you're selling on my slabs, maybe you're selling on eBay, maybe you're selling on IG. So for the purposes of this, we are not worrying about selling fees at all. So, cause it's good. Once again, it's going to apply across the board, regardless of which path you take. And the method that I'm going to lay out for you is not for everyone. This is a very proven method that a lot of people have a lot of success with. It's one I personally don't use because I just don't have access to a lot of clean raw. So just kind of keep all these things in mind as we kind of work through this. But the general overall point and thing that I want to lay out here is because one of the arguments that you always see in comments on videos, and once again, when it comes to grading companies, my general take is, is that you should be using all four depending on what it is that you're looking to do. Uh, there are four very viable candidates, PSA, BGS, SGC, CSG. They all have a place and they're all tools in the tool belt. They're all weapons in the arsenal. Depending on what you are looking to accomplish, choose the right tool or weapon, whatever, however you want to, whatever metaphor you want to use there. So the card in question that we're going to talk about today is a Jalen Hurts Optic Hollow of uh, just pretty, pretty standard fare, nothing crazy. So right now, raw, these are doing about the last sales 35. That's a little low. I think the one that sold raw, that last sale was a little banged up a little bit, but they generally go for about 40 bucks, give or take. Uh, I've seen some at 45, some at 40, and then a couple slightly below 40. So we're just going to go with 40 bucks, 40 bucks raw. PSA 10s go for about 300 fairly consistent. Let's see. SGC 10s are doing just under 200 for the purposes of this i rounded up to 200 even from 193 so sorry about the extra seven dollars per card here but I, I made some other little small rounding things up and down just to keep the math simple which lines right up that's 66 percent of a psa 10 that is usually right where sgc 10 sit versus psa 10 usually around that 60 to 65 percent mark pretty much dead on psa 9s are doing 90 bucks SGC 9.5s are doing 125. SGC 9s are doing 50. Once again, usually right about what we typically see. SGC 9s usually sell for ever so slightly above raw. PSA 9s usually get a decent premium over raw. Not always. Depends on the card. Actually, I think this is a little... That's about on point for a PSA 9, I guess. And that seems a little high, but we're going to run with it. Uh, so those are the numbers, essentially, that we are working with. Now, right now, SGC is... 30 bucks a card with little to no turnaround time. For the purposes of this, I put it as two weeks. Just shipping there, shipping back, this, that, and the other thing, and things could also change. PSA for this card, 
you could get away sending it lower than the $50 economy level. You could technically send it at the $30 value, but the stated turnaround time on that is extremely long. So I went with the $50 economy level service, which the stated turnaround time is two to three months. Now, I have seen, to be fair, that turnaround time be all over the place. Uh, I've seen people get economy orders back in about five or six weeks, and then I've seen economy orders come back the full 90 days. Uh, I haven't seen any go over the 90 days or go very far over the 90 days, but I've seen them run the gambit of five weeks to the full three months. So, and, and we'll talk about that kind of when we get into this. So th those are kind of the terms that we're, we're looking for here. And one of the common statements that you'll see on, you know, uh, in, in videos or when you're talking about a card is, oh, you got a PSA that you're going to get the most for it. Now, if you're just talking about a one-off, you're just sending one in, uh, you're not churning and burning. Yes, I would agree. If I had two of these cards and I was sending them in, I was going to get them back and I was going to sell them and then that was it, be done with it. I could see the case 100% for PSA. I would most likely send those to PSA. I work, I, I am not in the churn and burn game, but a lot of people are. So once again, it's all gonna depend on how you choose to interact with this stuff. Everyone has a different system, once again, that kind of works best for them. But I just wanna use this as an example, once again, to kind of show you, show all of you guys and girls out there that the most isn't always the best. And you could really apply this to a lot of different things when it comes to cards. So let's go ahead and pull up spreadsheet here. That's right, we went spreadsheet. So raw, 40 bucks each, we're buying five. So we're into the base cards for 200 bucks. And when I say base, I should say raw. And once again, this is Hertz Optic Hollow. Uh, this is our SGC group up here at the top. This is our PSA group here at the bottom. We're gonna spend five cards that's 150 bucks in grading fees with SGC, 250 bucks in grading fees with PSA. That's $350 total that we are into these cards for with SGC, 450 that we are into them for PSA. Now, I split this as evenly as I could because as we're all well aware, who the hell knows what the grades are gonna come back with, like. So for the purposes of this, and this could swing things obviously, but once again, this is just a macro level example of kind of how this could work. In our SGC submission, I had us get two SGC 10s, an SGC 9.5 and two SGC 9s. Here are the comp values for those cards. Assuming you sell all those, you would make $625 minus your 350 in costs. That's a $275 profit off the SGC submission. PSA, I had us get two PSA 10s and three PSA 9s. So 300, 300, and then three 90s. That's 870 total. Minus the 450, you're into it, equals a $420 profit. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, duh, PSA sells for the most. You're 100% correct. I send most of my cards to PSA. I get it. it, sells for the most, it's the most liquid. We all know the story. However, a lot of people like to churn and burn. If you're going to shows a lot, if you're set up at shows, you're constantly getting raw cards into you. Maybe you want to grind out on eBay buying raw cards like crazy. I don't know what your situation is, but a lot of people do this. So you made 275 bucks on the SGC submission profit. You made 420 bucks on the PSA submission profit. Once again, playing fast and loose here with the selling fees and the shipping and, and all that stuff. I get it. The difference comes into turnaround times. SGC, you could probably get two orders back in a month. So let's assume you get two orders back in a month. You get these cards back, you immediately take that money, you buy five more, and you immediately send those in. Now you get that submission back and sell it. In month one, you've made 275 bucks on submission one, 275 bucks on submission two, that would give you a total of 500 
and fifty per two submissions. So five hundred fifty bucks a month. So even if the PSA order came back at around five to six weeks, let's call it a month. Let's just say it came back in a month. You'd make four twenty off that loan order if it was on the super fast side of the turnaround times. We know what SGC is churning at right now. So you're going to get two submissions back in that first month at 550. So every month you just rinse and repeat. You could technically pull in 550, 550 and 550. Let's say your PSA order runs slow and you get in one of the 90 day batches for whatever reason. Maybe you, know, you got all those new value orders coming in the door. Who knows? So now with SGC over three months, you've gotten six orders back for a total of 1650 in profit with one PSA order coming back for 420 bucks. Now, yes, you max the value out on the PSA order, but even though you weren't selling for the most, you were selling quicker with the SGC orders, taking that money, reinvesting it, buying more cards, rinse and repeat. Now, I could have taken this even further and took, which I did not do, say we took the full 625 that we made on the SGC order and now dumped that in because you could technically buy more of these Hertz cards. Uh, you could almost get, uh, what, like another three more and then increase your chances of getting more tens, etc. Once again, this is very very fast and loose. We don't know exactly what the submissions are going to look like coming back. Do prices change over time? You know, the whole gambit of things. I understand. I'm sure people want to pick this apart in the comments down below. My point of all this is the most, getting the most out of the card by sending to whatever grading company that's selling for the most at the time isn't always the best choice if you have the ability to get much faster turnaround time, reinvest that money and put it back into something else and start the machine moving again. Now, once again, for everyone, that might not be the case. Or you might not want to deal with all this, you know, tracking down the raw cards, evaluating them, sending them off, this, that, the other thing. I get it. What I want you to focus in on here is that the turnaround times can play an important factor and it's something that you need to think about whenever you're submitting to whoever you're submitting to, how quick or how long is it gonna be until these cards get back into my hand to give me the ability to sell them and then take that money and put it into the next thing. It's a key piece to remember. Turnaround times aren't everything. There are some things that it makes sense to wait. For example, the July uh, $18 national special. I sent a bunch of Bowman baseball prospects in on that submission. Those cards, I don't really want to sell until February or March of next year. I am fine waiting. The turnaround time doesn't matter. But let's say it's the beginning of the NFL offseason and you want to start churning and burning football leading up to the national. Now you have a narrow window. You have a couple month window of when you want to do this in. So just something to keep in mind. Like I said, this is not perfect. I'm sure people are going to chew this apart. But... Just keep in mind, the turnaround time is very important. Getting the money back and getting it back into the market to buy more things, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and doing that over and over and over and over again is sometimes better than sending it off once, waiting three months, getting it back, and then selling it. Not in every case, but in some. So sit down, evaluate what you have to, have to send, look at a calendar, look at what you want to do when the money comes back, it's just one big math equation with some weird variables, biggest one being turnaround time in there. Hope this was helpful. Hope I didn't lose you guys and girls. Curious for your thoughts and comments down below. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.